If you're in the patching packet mines, good luck to you. It's been a busy, busy week. We'll start with Apple shipping a urgent patch for CVE 2025-24200, uh, patching an, a vulnerability in iPhones and iPads that allows us attackers with physical access to a locked iPhone or iPad to disable USB restricted mode. Uh, what... Uh, we Apple confirmed. Let me just say, Apple says they are aware of a report that this may have been exp- may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals. Very, very clear, precise language that we have not seen before. Costin, what do we think is happening here? Well, um, this is for sure one interesting um, patch and one interesting uh, zero day or exploit uh, from from several points of view. On one hand, I think it's interesting. This is credited to Bill Marchak of the Citizen Lab at the University of Toronto. Uh, Citizen Lab, they are known for having uh, uh, discovered a lot of um, nation state sponsored cyber espionage campaigns. Um, and I think that, uh, in particular, in this case, uh, the exploit was probably used uh, for um, uh, getting access to locked iPhones or devices through physical access. So since uh, Apple introduced uh, USB restricted mode, which was uh, in 2018, um, it's extremely difficult and more difficult for people like um, Gray Key. Gray Key was uh, one of these uh, things that was used by um, law enforcement to break into locked phones, to essentially access them, to bypass uh, the pin and uh, get access to the phone. So Apple introduced a USB restricted mode, which essentially is a protection mechanism. After one hour of um, the phone being uh, locked, um, it simply disables uh, the USB uh, connectivity. So uh, this essentially mitigates potential zero days, exploits of all sorts um, against the phones. And it makes it essentially way more difficult to, to get access to the phone. Uh, Juanito, Costin mentioned Bill Marsak from Citizen Lab as the credit here. We have not seen a report from uh, Citizen Lab at all related to this. I saw Bill just kind of tweeting a couple of things here. Uh, What do we think is happening here? Is this like one of those celebrate uh, 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 forensics companies? What do we think is happening here? I mean, I assumed in in the very beginning that it would be like a celebrate type thing uh, just because of the physical access. But but to be honest... um, there's always this we've always heard about and and seen discussion of uh popping iphones through physical access and same with laptops right like you look back at like the hacking team suite finish uh, sorry fin fisher suites like they've always had some component where you know if you can get physical access like your evil made type attack then you could go to town and a lot of the time what we would see with those for iphones you're basically looking at some like you're basically looking at can we jailbreak the phone as part of essentially shoving some malware in there but this could just be you know you mentioned celebrate this is also the kind of thing that you would see in like a normal like law enforcement suite where they the typical right like we stopped you at the border you're sitting in a room somewhere for an hour they take your phone um and they 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 don't necessarily infect it with anything but they collect sort of everything from it um and it I don't know. This is one of those situations where, um, you know, you look at something like the the restricted uh, mode and similar discussion that we had recently about, you know, what's going to happen with these devices that are being locked away in, in a locker somewhere. And the the security measures, like, I'm glad they're there. I wish we didn't have to go this route because, like, there are ways in which you go, okay, from a law enforcement standpoint, like the notion of not being able to collect anything from an iPhone, even for like a legitimate case, it's kind of like, it's kind of a bummer. But then you remember that the world isn't just run by like cushy, like first world European uh, situations where you have rights and you go, okay, well, I'm glad Apple is sort of doing something about it. Um, I will just rail against one thing. Like I, I am looking forward to whatever Citizen Lab report comes or doesn't come. I'm assuming, may, you know, maybe Bill's holding it for like PivotCon or something. Uh, but uh, but I, I I just, I can't stand this like may have been exploited shit. Like what you're describing, 
Like, you know it was exploited. Like, you know it. Just fucking say it. Like, just... What stops? Do you think this is just legal language of, like, maybe some liability down the road they're trying to mitigate? Like, what's the... I, I, I will discuss it again. AMD also had this issue when they're talking about their microcode, uh, this microcode issue yeah. that Google did the partial disclosure in. It's, like, a potential vulnerability. They're patching I'm, it all day and telling everyone, we can't tell you yet how bad it is, right? It's, but it's only a potential vulnerability. It's only like, potential. The ridiculous may have it been... Is, well, th there is a point to saying like something could be exploited when somebody brings you a vulnerability that like, you know, some some clever person figured out there's a vuln here. It's not that they found something being used in the wild or they discovered a vuln because they're investigating an attack. Then, you know, if it's not those situations, then I totally understand saying, hey, like there's this vuln. We don't know if it's been exploited. We don't know if, if anybody else sort of like parallel discovered it, but it's there and we po we, we patched it. When you're getting a vuln and somebody's basically like Bill Marsak's in the middle of it. Like, I don't think Bill is sitting around doing like iOS security research, like himself, like looking for vulns in these iPhones. Right. Like if, someone, if brought, someone came it, to him with a device and basically yeah. said, listen, I suspect something on this device. And Bill and these guys kind of broke it yeah. apart and I was able to figure, figure that out. Apple's I, language that it was an extremely yeah. sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals tells the rest of us not to worry about it or not. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because we are not sophisticated or? Yeah, we're, we're not, not extremely special individuals. We're not, we're not specific <laughs> targeted individuals. Not the three of us, but just generally. <laughs> like my mom and dad is like, okay, this is Mossad or not Mossad it things. This doesn't uh, have anything to do with me. Two things, Costin. Are we taking our old phones unpatched and putting it on a shelf for maybe some future forensics or some future <laughs> analysis down the road? <laughs> well, I was thinking, um, um, j just imagine, by the way, the language. Uh, Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited. Is it that the report says that this issue may have been exploited? And in that case, just imagine like what the reality is. Maybe uh, somebody comes to Bill and uh, then, uh, you know, he's looking into that and then he reports it to Apple and says, I think it may have been exploited. And then Apple, what can Apple say? Was it exploited? They don't know. So that's why they may say may uh -huh. have been exploited. I think that's uh, that's the reason because they don't have their own telemetry or confirmation um, this was exploited. By the way, I, I, what I thought, um, I thought it was... Uh, uh, maybe a bit unclear the language in the uh, Apple advisory or what was missing from there. Uh, just uh, to clarify if lockdown mode was some kind of, I don't know, protection or if it made any difference. And by the looks of it, it didn't make any, any kind of difference. And uh, by the way, it's important to say that this USB restricted mode, you can turn it on and off uh, on your iPhone. It can be enabled or disabled. But if your phone is in lockdown mode, then it's automatically on. You cannot disable uh -huh. it, basically. So whenever you connect a new device to your phone, you need to input the uh, the pin anyways. Uh, but by the looks of it, and I think this um, this report from uh, Quark's lab, I think it's uh, interesting. Yes, because I wanted to pivot it, to that very quickly. It Our goes a bit, Quark's right? Quark's it lab is a, a bit French. Through the, through the differences. Let me set Go it ahead. up. Quark's, tra ahead. Quark's lab is a French um, uh, security research outfit. Our our buddy uh, Ivan Arce is actually the CTO over there. They do some amazing research uh, below the operating system, and uh, they published the first analysis of this UI USB restricted bypass with like some speculation and some suggestion that they believe they found it in like an assistive, like a touch assistive thing. Uh, you know, that warning that comes up that says accessory connected on lock phone mm -hmm. to the accessories like that touch piece there. They believe they've, they've, they've flagged like they, they did some diffing and believe they flagged the patch. What, what can you share about this costing? Um, so I, I, I spent some time looking into the, uh, into the, into the blog and what they're saying there. And, um, it, it's interesting, like to me, this, um, um, assistive, uh, assistive touch mode, uh, uh, or um, switch control, these kind of things, they've, they've always been a bit strange on the phone. I don't know if you play with them. Uh, in, in particular, like me, I was playing because I wanted to uh, to code a clicker that would uh, play like a, a game on the iPhone and like uh, constantly click somewhere so it doesn't get disconnected. So you can use uh, this uh, assistive uh, mode for it. Um, and uh, it, it's always been a bit strange, and in particular, what's interesting here is that when this uh, mode uh, switched on, 
for some reason, Apple was uh, simply disabling the um, protection. And the other thing which attracted my attention in their research, they say that, um, uh, well, the USB protocol is completely disabled, so you can still charge the phone. However, other protocols can be used uh, freely over the lightning port, and that is a bit scary. In particular, they mentioned the uh, IAP2 protocol, that it can be used for some devices such as, um, um, uh, again, Bluetooth style clickers, exactly what uh, what I was doing uh, with that as well. Um, so in a way, I'm happy that they closed this. It doesn't, slow, it doesn't seem to me it was uh, malicious, like the, the feature that was being exploited was there maliciously. Maybe just an overlook um, if you want. But I wonder, just like it stay, kind of stays in my mind, if there are maybe more things to look at, maybe there's more vulnerabilities there, I don't know. It, it felt like uh, a, a bit worrying that uh, there are still other protocols uh, which are still available. Uh, no IOCs, no telemetry, uh, nothing to help people figure out, well, maybe maybe my phone was in someone's Just hands at some point. So we are kind keep of... Keep your phone in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way, by the way, we know, we know people who are stopped uh, on border control uh, like you say, their laptop, their phone uh, confiscated for an hour or two, and then it came back. Like everything's good, you can go. Thank you very much for your assistance, for your help. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you don't know what happened to the phone. Like um, I know a lot of people when they go to border control, they turn off their phones because, like before first unlock, the phone is a much more solid, uh, solid state as opposed to the phone uh, being turned on. But at the same time, in some countries, when you go through border control, they can force you to to put the pin. 